Okay, so if you're new to the world of penetration testing or capture the flags in cybersecurity, then you're probably going to come across the issue of some point of moving files from your Linux attack box over to the compromised machine once you have remote code execution. Typically what happens is when you're new, you find one way that works for everything. And then whenever that one specific way it doesn't work, you run into a lot of problems and your world starts to crumble. So I wanna help you with a couple of different ways that you can move files from your Linux machine over to the machine that you have compromised. And you may think, why would I need to do this? There are several reasons. Maybe you're in Active Directory and you need to be able to run Bloodhound or possibly you just want to move over WinPs or some other Windows enumeration tool and you want to be able to enumerate the machine that you have just compromised. So the need to move files over to the compromised machine is going to be really, really necessary for you as you progress. So I want to give you three ways to move files from your Linux attack box over to the compromised Windows machine. And if this video gets enough likes, I will help you guys move files from Windows to Linux or Linux to Linux as well. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so I have already opened up the Windows privilege escalation on TriHackMe. The reason I went ahead and opened this up is it is something that everybody is going to have access to. And all you have to do is start the machine and then RDP from the attack box over into the Windows machine. And this takes a little bit of time, so I've already gone ahead and done it. If you want, you can go ahead and set this up and follow along. But here is the Windows terminal, and we'll go ahead and use our Kali Linux terminals over here with these different tabs in order to pull over our files. So if we come over here and we look at our temp and our SMB share, then we can ls and we can see we have win.exe. I've already moved this over, so that way you guys don't have to watch me do this. If you don't have the SMB share file, when we get to this point, you can just go ahead and you'll just cd over to temp and then you can make a directory for SMB share and I already have it made and then you can CD over into the SMB share and that should be everything you need in order to get this set up is just a file and if you didn't want to run winps or what I have renamed here win.exe you can just gedit and make a test.txt and put in something right here and it should save for you and then you'll have this file and you can move this file over back and forth if you would like. So if we ls now we'll have the test.txt with something inside of it. So now we have the file that we wanna go ahead and move over to our Windows compromised machine from our Kali Linux over here. So the first thing we can do is we can just, since I'm already in this file, I'll go ahead and move the test.txt because it's something you have access to over to the Windows machine. So one way to do this, and probably my favorite, is to just set up a Python server. So the simple way to do this is with just going Python, and I already have it typed out here, so we're gonna use the imp, the dash m flag, and then HTTP server on port 80. So we can go ahead and start this up. And now we're serving up all the files inside of this directory. So we would be able to grab either the win.exe or the test.txt from our Windows machine. So if we come over here, one of my favorite ways that I probably try first all the time because it's easy to remember is cert util-f-url cache, and then we put in our IP address, and so we'll say HTTP slash slash and 10 to 1 182, and then we can just put test.txt, and I think we have to put the file that we want to save right here. And actually I am not in a very good directory, so I'm gonna run this. And it might not work just because of where we are. It actually did work. So if we wanted to go type test.txt, why can't I see what I'm doing? Enter, it's going to give us the contents right here. So we have something. Now, typically you wouldn't want to write right here. What you'd do is you'd CD over to the desktop. And the reason you'd want to CD over to the desktop is because we are the user we're the user user and we can write to our own desktop. So we'd wanna be in the desktop or in the documents. Uh, some people like to go to the temp folder and write there, but I come over to the desktop because I know I should have permissions to write to this specific directory. That worked there for us. We were able to grab the test.txt, but I recently was doing a CTF which gave me the idea for this and I was not able to actually move a file using certutil or this next method I'm gonna show you, I had to use an SMB server, so these are the three ways I'm gonna show you. So the next one is to use PowerShell, so you can go PowerShell, actually let's see if we have IEX, it says IEX is not recognized as an internal command, so if we just try to run uh, IEX and then new 
object and then we run the full string that I'm going to show you in just a second right here. It's not going to work because IEX doesn't work, but IEX is used within PowerShell. So we can actually just type in PowerShell. I don't know if I'm spelling that right because the terminal is not scrolling down for me. So I guess I'll just leave it. Um, PowerShell. And then we can see right here this power this PS we're moved over to PowerShell. Now we should be able to run all of these IEX commands and we're still in our desktop. So now we should be able to grab that file. I'm actually gonna grab the win.exe this time. So now here is the next string that you can use in order to grab files specifically within PowerShell. This is probably my favorite one within PowerShell. So we'll go ahead and say new dash object net dot web client dot download string. And if string doesn't work, you can actually try dot download file as well. I'm not sure which one actually works on this machine. So we'll go string because that's what came to my mind. And then we want to put in our HTTP slash slash our IP address, which is 21182. And then we'll go win.exe. And then where we want to save it, we're going to save it right here to this desktop. So we'll close this off with a string. We'll put a comma and then we're going to just type out where we are. So we're in the users, we're the user, and we want to save it to the desktop. And we want to save win.exe. And we can close this off. Uh, let's see if there's any typos. We have a typo and it says that it's not working. So let's actually try download file because what we're trying to grab is a file. So instead of string, we'll try download file. And this little squiggly right here is telling me that I have a quote that I never actually start. So we'll come back here, add in our single quote inside of there. Okay, so it looks like I actually forgot a quote right here as well. So I am just a master of forgetting quotes right now. Let's see if this runs for us. And let's go ahead and enter. It looks like we were able to grab win.exe. And if we just type in win.exe, uh, this might not run because we're in PowerShell. I think we might need to actually exit PowerShell in order to get this to run. So we can just type in exit and then we can type in win.exe. And there we have winp is running for us and it's going to enumerate possible privilege escalation vectors for us. We'll go ahead and cancel it so we don't need that to run. So those are my two favorite ways to pull files over from my Linux attack box. If you come over here, you can see that it is grabbing those files from the server that we have created and we're hosting up those files within this SBM, SMB share. So now let's actually create an SMB server and grab the files that way. If we come back over to this tab, I already have this typed out for us. We're gonna be using Impacket. It should already be installed on your Kali Linux machine. If you don't, you should be able to just run something similar to sudo apt get Impacket and it should install all of this for you. And then this is the syntax that you're gonna to wanna to run. We're gonna be hosting up our SMB share file. So this is why earlier I told you, you'll need to create this temp SMB share. So you can have this right here for you. And I accidentally copied and pasted that. And this is gonna create an SMB server and it's going to host up for us on the share right here. So now we should be able to connect to this share file from the Windows machine with the user test and the password test. You don't actually need a username and password, um, but in the newer version of Windows, it's not actually gonna to connect to your Kali Linux machine unless you have a username and a password. So on newer Windows configurations, you're gonna to wanna to have this right here. So we will want to connect to our share. So we'll type in net use in, and then make sure you have this space after the in, that's really important. And then we will type in our IP address, 10.2.1.182. And then the share, which is where I get that right here. So we have the share. So we're gonna to connect to the share and we'll connect to our user and the password test and test. So the user's test and the password's test. And if we got all of that right, it should let us connect. And the problem is I put net user and this is going to be net use. So now that should connect. We actually see over here, we get a connection. So it is in fact connected. And now all you have to do in order to get this is you just type in copy in and then backslash and we want to copy when actually we do not have test.txt i think in our desktop so we can copy that file over here and if it is successful it will tell us one file connect 
uh, one file copied and we should be able to now type in dir and we have our test.txt and win.exe. So those are my three favorite ways to get files from my Linux attack machine over to Windows. And you will need to be able to do this in the future and you're probably gonna wanna know more than one way. These are just my favorites. Sometimes some of them will work, like recently I just came across a CTF where cert util did not work so I had to use IEX. And so there are some other little tricks if these don't work and I will share those with you if you guys would like me to. Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.